you should be worried about it and concerned about it. We all should. Sea levels rising, you know, with the, the latest estimates, put it at around three millimeters per year over the last hundred years. So three millimeters doesn't seem like much and say, well, why should I worry about three millimeters per year, right? It's like that. So when you, when you realize that more than one in 100 people live within one meter of, of sea level, you know, 80% of the population living within a kilometer of, of sea level, it affects a huge amount of people. The worst case scenario is a meter over 100 years. That's one lifetime, right? So that's significant. So you should be concerned about it. Your children should be very concerned about it. Sea level rise literally creeps up on you. It's, it's not something, it's not like a, a hurricane that gets on the news right away and it comes and goes and it's uh, like a short scale, short term devastating event. The sea level rise is, is slow and steady. It's kind of like a drought, it just creeps up on you. I think there is more political awareness that this is a real phenomena. Um, it's something that needs to be paid attention to. Political timescales are not 100 years, right? They're four years or shorter. It doesn't mean that they should be excused from talking about it and doing something. Sea level rise is one of the gamuts of responses to global warming as the climate warms. In terms of where does the increase come from, it's several things, and one of them is the thermal expansion of water. And most estimates put that at around 50% of the total increase will be due to the thermal expansion of water. The other part of it is to do to melting of grounded ice caps and glaciers, so that the ice that's floating already doesn't have a significant increase in, in the water level because it's floating already and it's already displaced the water. It's more the ice that is in fact grounded to bedrock. If you look at the mass balance of the ice sheet as that grounding line increases, it advances into the ocean and you get this um, cantilever effect where that part of the ice sheet is now protruding over the ocean. That's the key thing. That, that's, that's, that part is displacing the water a lot, so that's 40% of your other increase. There's a lot of feedbacks in that, and it can, it can advance really quickly, really suddenly, you know, in Antarctica, for example, in Greenland. So it's not just slow and steady. It can accelerate. Um, once you lose that friction between that ice sheet and the bedrock, it can all of a sudden flow quite rapidly. Then you'll get a, a sudden increase that will be much larger than the thermal expansion. Okay. Uh, that's kind of scary because we're a global society. We have a global economy, and whenever somebody says something anywhere around the world, the stock market reacts instantly. <laughs> so if with our, our global connection that we have, you know, it's really one planet and something that happens in the Antarctic will affect you, either economically or politically or socially. So it, it, we're, we're more connected. So anything that happens at either poles of the globe that affect the, the global environment, we will be affected one way or the other.